What's up everyone? Just wrapping up some fun sales training that I was supposed to do earlier. How's everyone doing? You just suspended your live. Yeah, I've got I've gotten my um, live suspended I think four times. And the reason has been um, illegal goods and regulated activities. And I've had like a few posts taken down for that, that reason. Um, but so you just have to appeal it. It might take a couple days to get back, but pretty annoying. Top five companies of stars in SDR. There's there's a lot. Um, I recommend uh, you know local. You know look at Built-in. Built-in.com. They have like hub websites for most major cities. So as an SDR, it's great to be. Um, like close to team members. Normally an SDR role would be like an office versus versus remote. Um, but I like to also look at bigger companies. The big thing you wanna look for starting as an SDR is getting good training and enablement. <clears throat> How often am I traveling? Um, now it's, it's starting to pick up. Like I was in Seattle for four days this week and I'll be in Boston uh, in two weeks. So it kind of, it, I mean, it really depends on the role. Some people are traveling like every week, multiple days, depends on the territory. Other people are traveling only maybe like once a quarter. I've had roles like that too in the past. That's about ISR with Dell. Yeah. I mean, Dell doesn't pay top of market, but they have pretty good training. I think they're, they're a good place to start. Hey, maybe direct, uh, what's the best path to move from Amazon marketplace account manager to SDR AWS? Um, you just have to go through the internal transfer process. So they, you know, it's, it's documented internally on what that process is, but you know, your first bet would be to start networking with the SDR or the sales managers. Um, there's a bunch of them on AWS. You gotta look at ones that have openings and you can also reach out to ones that don't have openings. Do I speak some Polish? No, ja, ja rozumiem wszystko po polsku, ale ja, ja nie mogę mówić za dobrze. So yeah, I, I can I can understand Polish really well, but uh, I don't really speak it much because, or speak it well. I can understand it fluently, but my parents, they both immigrated from Poland, and uh, they, they encouraged me and my sister to talk a lot in English, which a lot of, apparently it's a pretty common thing. So we ended up like losing a lot of our speaking. And I also wasn't a great student when I was younger, so I did Polish school, but didn't pay attention. Yeah, these are AirPod Maxes. Uh, they're pretty awesome. The noise cancellation is is great. I think it's better than the Bose, in my opinion. I got them. They're kind of pricey. I think they're like five fifty, brand new. But I got them open box on Amazon for like three hundred, and then you know just wrote it off anyway. But uh, I think at like three hundred bucks, they're they're pretty good. You know the Bose ones are pretty similar. They're all metal, super solid. The only thing is they don't fold, so they're kind of like big in your bag. But I think they they sound great and they sync really well with your your phone. Am I sick? I'm a little. I'm a. I'm just a little congested. This happens like every time I travel, um, and then also whenever I'm traveling out with customers, usually I'm not getting a lot of sleep. Like we're staying out late, getting drinks and everything. So. Most nights this week, I think was getting like four hours of sleep, five hours of sleep. So kind of catch up on that. How's the quarter going? Uh, it's, it's going okay. I got a pretty aggressive growth numbers. So, I mean, we'll see. I only have two customers and they're pretty large. So it, it's a little different. How did I get into tech sales? I got into tech sales by um, doing an internal transfer. I started off as an, um, applications engineer like it was like tech support basically um and then i really didn't consider sales at all and then i started kind of shadowing some folks because i was trying to figure out what i want to do with my career and then realized that like tech sales software sales is totally different than like what i had in mind when i heard sales i thought of like car sales high pressure sales i mean not that there's anything wrong with car sales but you know it's a different type of selling motion so in tech sales software sales it's all about being like a trusted consultant, trusted advisor. And uh, so I, I ended up uh, doing an internal transfer and I went, I was an SDR for 10 months, got promoted to an inside sales rep closing position. And then I went to a software company. Am I in Chicago? Yep, I'm in Chicago. You can see I'm in the, I'm in the loop, um, technically South Loop, but you can see that's, that's Grant Park. 
Mm-mm-mm. How long did it take for me to hit 100K a year? I hit 100K in my second job. So my first tech sales job was at National Instruments. They were hardware test and measurement. So it wasn't really all software sales. It actually was a lot of hardware sales. We did like testing and automation equipment that you would use to like automate like factories or use like do really precise measurements in labs. And um, when I started off as an SDR or on the support side, it was like 62K, this was in 2014. Then I moved into a SDR role and then the inside sales role. I think by the time I left, it was like 72K. But I knew I needed to get into like a real software company to make more money. So that's when I went to a cybersecurity startup and they started me at 115K and then I got bumped up to 135 within like six months. So it was like the, basically the second role. And I'll, actually I'm in, cause I do a lot of advice for, for new new reps and new SDRs. They, I'm surprised actually the, the salaries have been like pretty high. Like there's been actually a good amount of SDRs getting 100, 105K OTEs for their first job, like right out of college or with no prior experience. So like the, the salaries are, are going up quite a bit. Is there a tech bubble? Maybe, so like bubble is kind of interesting. So when you look at like the last tech bubble, like the dot-com bust, uh, you know, 2000, 2001, you know, around that time, uh, or I guess it was like 99. So at that time you had a lot of like high growth startups, but they weren't bringing in a lot of revenue. It was, to me, I saw more parallels with that, with what we were seeing with like the crypto bust. Like you get a lot of hype with all these different coins and projects, but they're not really profitable. It's all speculation. Right now, the big tech companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, they're like, they're printing serious money. Like there's serious revenue that they're making. So there isn't like any danger of those companies just bankrupting and going away. The bigger bubble, I think is we, we just have, I think we have, um, oh, I think it paused there. Yeah, I think there's a bubble um, with like the bonds market with interest rates being so low, I think we started to see a lot more risky investments and the multiples are really high, meaning uh, companies are being traded at higher valuations than they were in the past based on the revenue that they're making. And that's because when interest rates are really low, you need to like look at where you're gonna invest your money. And so instead of putting your money into like like bonds or or, or lower return investments, you're gonna put it in real, or, uh, in like real estate or, or in stocks. And then what happens when the interest rates go up, it affects like the multiple that they use. So even though the companies themselves might not have a revenue decrease, if interest rates start to go like super high, which they potentially might, then we'll see like stock prices potentially go to half or even less. That's the bigger bubble I would say. And then we did start to see like some pretty crazy valuations for new startups, uh, like people getting like hundred million dollar, you know, seed rounds, which is pretty crazy. And it started to slow down a little bit, but it's but it's picking back up. So uh, I don't know if we're quite at a bubble yet, but we could be we could be due for like a pretty good um, correction for pricing. Why aren't I active in Discord anymore? I it, to me honestly, it's just like a time thing. Um, most of my time, other than work, is you know I'm responding to a bunch of DMs on like Instagram, and then doing TikToks. And then I did the Discord because I wanted to scale and then like, for example, share my responses and make them public. And then um, I probably should actually start doing that again because right now with, with Instagram DMs, it's it's not super scalable because it's, it's just based on how quickly I can respond to everyone. But I will be active on the Discord again. And I had like a couple other people that are interested in moderating. So stay tuned. What's my opinion on the stock split? I'm a, So stock splits themselves, don't really do too much for the stock from the fundamental perspective, but they did announce like pretty hefty buybacks. So historically with other companies that have done stock splits, we've seen pretty big jumps in stock prices. So um, Amazon's been pretty flat or, you know, slight decline in the past, over the past year. I think, uh, I think it's going to be barring a world war. I think we'll see a pretty good jump in Amazon price. Mm -mm -mm. Lots of questions, guys. I'm just I'm just getting reading what I can here. If I don't get it, feel free to put it in there again. Do I rate Salesforce as a first for a first employer getting a SaaS? Yeah, Salesforce is great. Um, they've got excellent training, mentorship. That's really what you want to look for on the first role. Chicago. Yep, I'm in Chicago. You can see see all the buildings downtown. What's my opinion on starting Texas CDW? Yeah, CDW is great. 
Tips for sales in a recession. A uh, big tip would be be on your manager's good side. Like if you're if the market's down, that's that's a good time to kind of suck up a bit. You know, make sure you're making your manager do well. Stay on top of all your metrics. There's a good chance you're not going to hit your quota, but as long as you're putting in the numbers and the efforts and documenting everything, you hopefully should be in a good place. The other thing too is it might not be a good time to con to consider leaving like a more stable, bigger company for a smaller, riskier startup. Another consideration. How much does sales engineering pay? Sales engineering pays pays pretty good too. So they're usually they're a little bit higher on the base side, lower commission. Um, the upside is lower, obviously, because your commission is lower. But like enterprise sales engineers will be making also like 250k plus in addition to, to stock. What age did I start? Pretty much right when I graduated. Um, oh, this is cool. Actually, they made these questions bigger. Um, how do I manage stress in sales? Uh, so two things. One, is getting enough sleep, super important. Uh, two, eating well and exercising. If I don't, I notice that if I don't do those two things, then my performance starts to drop down. Exercise, great stress management. Get outside, get that vitamin D. Is it hard to go to SMB SaaS sales to enterprise? Uh, it's not. So what you need to do to move up from SaaS to enterprise within the same company, you need to make sure you're performing well compared to your peers. Make sure you're crushing quota, and then you also need to be documenting like the bigger deals that you're working on and closing. So go ahead and do that, and then also, it's a lot easier to do it in an internal promotion versus trying to like go to a separate company. If you're applying for enterprise positions, they're going to be looking for experience at the enterprise level versus just at the SMB level. So try to get that internal promotion. Uh, do I prefer big tech to startups? You know, they have their pros and cons. I think um, in general, I like startups a lot. Uh, big tech, if you're at a lower level position, can kind of feel like you're like just a cog in the machine. Big tech, I think, is fine if you're at the senior level roles because then you can still get like director and executive exposure which is good uh big techs also tend to be more stable in terms of your career growth trajectories or potentially more openings for you to move up into so very you know, a lot of pros and cons and also there's a huge variance with startups and also with big tech companies too so it's hard to say like definitively one over the other thoughts on selling SaaS versus infrastructure Big difference is how your quota is determined. So in SaaS, you know, you close a contract, you don't have to wait for the product to get delivered and you get paid on that. Um, in cloud, you can close a big migration, but you don't get commission until they actually spend on the platform, which can take a while. Why is the Amazon interview loop so painful? Yeah, so Google has a pretty painful one too, Microsoft. The reason why is they try to eliminate as much bias as they can. So you do a bunch of interviews. They try to make the interview evaluations as objective as possible versus subjective. So that's that's really the reason why. Like past like the hiring manager review, like all the individuals within the loops, they're not even really even looking at your resume, for example. Um, they're not doing a holistic view. They're like focusing in on very specific characteristics that they're trying to evaluate you on. What level am I at AWS? I'm a level six. What was my journey like? How'd I start off SDR? Yeah, so I started off in tech, tech support uh, in January of 2014 as a applications engineers, essentially tech support, phone support. Did that for about a year and a half. Then I moved into a sales development representative role internally. Uh, made sure to crush my numbers, got promoted within 10 months, promoted into an inside sales rep closing role. Um, I did that for, I think it was about a year, a little over a year. I got, I, it's hard to remember now. And then I ended up leaving for a cybersecurity startup that paid a lot more. From there, I got poached by Google, joined their cloud sales team, did another startup. We had a big layoffs 10 months into it. And then now I'm at AWS. So kind of jumped around a few different places. Do startups set unrealistic quotas? It depends. If like it's a new sales team, then sometimes the quotas are just a guess. They're putting their finger in the air. Uh, but you can look at RepView. RepView is great. If it's a bigger startup, they have data on like percentage of reps that are hitting quota. Am I gonna stay at AWS long term? I mean, it depends. Like any position, I think in general, you really have to kind of evaluate what does your career trajectory look like. Like if you know the time to leave basically is when you plateau. 
and you don't really see a clear path to promotion or, or you're not growing anymore. And that, you know, that time can, can range for some people that happens after two years, other people happens after five years or even 10 years. Um, especially at the higher levels, promotion isn't as straightforward as it is like when you're like an SDR and moving up. Um, do I have my solutions architect professional certification yet? No, it's on my list. I have the cloud practitioner. I actually got that one while I was doing the interview and I did it before. When you start your own company, hire me. Yeah, I've, I've got a few ideas. I gotta, I'm still putting my ducks in a row. Maybe I'll, I'm, you know, building up the passive income or the, the other outside TikTok income first and that'll make me more stable. That way, um, one of the best ways I think to start when you're doing a startup is to bootstrap as much as you can. And the best way you can do that is being financially stable in terms of not being reliant on, on a set income so that way you don't have to like give away too much equity when you're raising money. Are all the high paying software roles inside? No, the high paying ones, they're, they're gonna have travel, they're gonna have some customer exposure. What tool in AWS do you dislike the most if you have one? Uh, I don't know if there's a specific one I really dislike. Um, I do like SageMaker quite a bit. What's the difference between sales engineer and pre-sales solutions architect? Great question. Sometimes it's the same, it depends on the company, but if you see both of them, usually Solutions Architect is even more technical than the sales engineer. That's the that's the distinction really. A sales engineer will usually be on a commission, they'll have a quota, and they uh, and then a Solutions Architect will be on a bonus instead. Add sales at Google versus Amazon, pros, cons, differences. Uh, I don't have too much exposure on the ad side on either. It's, it's separate orgs. When I was at Google, I was selling cloud. Uh, am I in Austin, Texas? No, I'm in Chicago right now, but I have property in Austin too. Advice for AE going from Fortune 50 to smaller company with no processes. Yeah, be be ready to wear a lot of hats. So that's the biggest thing going from big company to a startup. You, you have to do a lot of stuff on your own. You know, you're not going to have a bunch of like contract support. Now you're going to have as much marketing support, specialists. So be ready for that. Dream car, uh, Pagani Huayra. Am I renting or own condo? Yeah, just renting right now. I'm in like one of the luxury buildings. So I was looking at buying a condo here, but a lot of them like, like the gym and stuff and the amenities really aren't that great or the buildings are kind of old, even like for like a million dollar condo. So just renting right now. I don't plan staying in Chicago long-term either. So that's the other thing. Hey man, you're in tech sales in Chicago. We'd love to chat over a drink sometime. Yeah, uh, met up with a few people in Chicago. I've uh, been meaning to set up a happy hour in my building. We've got like these really big amenity areas. Now that like all the restrictions are lifted, I'm gonna probably aim to do that in like the next next two weeks or so. And I'll let you know. What's my after tax income? Yeah, so uh, I'm still doing the taxes like pre-tax, I think it was like 750 it kind of came in at last year. But I have a lot of deductions with, you know, rental property depreciation, uh, various expenses that I've tied to like TikTok as well. So really the solutions to mitigate is you need to have a side hustle that you can invest in. So rather than let's say paying $50,000 in taxes, instead if you invest, you know, $50,000 in your business, then, you know, you're saving, you know, whatever your tax rate is on that. So it could be, you know, 35, 40%, depending on the state you're in. What city metro area be the preference? Uh, you know, I like Austin a lot. Austin's cool. Um, and I also like SoCal. That'd be the other preference. When you get a big commission check, what percentage do you put in savings? Invest. I don't really do like a, so other than my 401k match, I don't really do like a set percentage mostly because a lot of my investing isn't like linear so like I'm doing more real estate so I'm not so because of that I'm not necessarily putting money away it's kind of like sitting in one pot but I, on on the other hand I don't like to keep a lot of cash like in my accounts I'd rather like put it to work so like when I got my big commission check I uh, had like the TRX that came in so I just paid that cash and I'm just waiting for the title to come in so I can flip that do I leverage a lot for real estate? 
Yeah, I do. I, I like low down payment options. So my first property, I did three and a half percent down. And then the the other two that I'm building right now, I did uh, 10%. That was the lowest I could do for construction. Thoughts on Denver? Denver's cool. I'm a big skier, snowboarder. What age did I start? Right when I graduated college, basically. So, uh, graduated, well, I started in like 2014, so I was 23, I guess. I did, a, it was a little break between finishing school and the first job. What salary OTE should you should be looking for for BDR, SDR? Uh, 60 to 90K is pretty typical. Some companies will do as high as 100, but usually it'll be between 60 to 90K and like an 80-20 split. Is AWS CloudQuest a good start to learn? Yeah, CloudQuest, I, I checked it out. It's pretty cool. Teaches you what you need to know for cloud practitioner. Uh, is, uh, what's my degree? I did biomedical engineering. My plan was to do medical school. Clearly I'm not doing anything related to that. So you don't really need one. I have colleagues that, you know, a lot of them do have degrees, but you definitely don't need it. Most, most of the big tech companies dropped their degree requirements a few years ago. It's all more about like your skills and abilities. So advice for a new MBA grad, uh, best advice is leverage your alumni network. Don't underestimate the power of that alumni network. Referrals go a long, long way. Do I have a quarterly gate for commission? Yeah, so uh, the commission is, I don't get accelerators until the yearly quota is hit. So for example, I hit, you know, like 120% of quota last year, but I didn't, I didn't actually pass that 100% threshold until Q4. So all the accelerator was in that, in that big one. Do you think we're going to a recession? It depends. You know, if I think what would, what would trigger it would be if Russia gets even more aggressive and then, and then China joins in and they try to like split the world economies into, into two separate parts, then we'll probably see some issues there. Um, inflation was looking to be an issue and that's why the Fed was raising their rates. If the rates go up a lot, that's going to bring down prices on real estate. It's going to bring down prices on stock and equities as big funds sell and go into, into bonds. So, I mean, there's a lot of factors. It's hard to say. I mean, people were, you know, for the past three years, four years, they've been saying like a recession is coming because we've had this long, incredible bull run, but it, but it hasn't happened. So it's, it's hard to say. Can you see outside? Yeah, you can see outside there. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool view. It's a little foggy outside, so you can't see too much. Most challenging software to sale is it paid out appropriately. Uh, you know, I think in my opinion, like the lower level software, like infrastructure level databases is more difficult than like end to end SaaS solutions. Hey, uh, what about the possibility of extreme hyperinflation though? Yeah, it's, it's big, it's a big possibility, but you know, we're already starting to see some consumer pushback. Um, like they're not, like I saw like one, uh, clothing store said that customers aren't buying the higher prices that they're setting out. So that's what could potentially slow down inflation. If consumers just stop spending, like realistically, it does get to the point where prices will go up to a certain point, but it's not keeping up with, you know, the salary raises that people are getting. So something has to give. Do I live in Nima? Yeah, I do live in Nima. Yeah, it's a great building. Been here like a year and a half. Thoughts on supply chain enterprise products? Supply chain, I'm very bullish on it. I mean, we saw it in COVID. There is huge impacts. You know, there's, you know, since we've kind of globalized and outsourced a lot, supply chains are a lot more complex than they used to be. It used to be, you just did like just-in-time manufacturing, just-in-time processes, pioneered kind of like by Toyota, but it really falls apart when you have like these big disruptions. When's the meetup? You think you live three blocks? Um, I, it might be, I think maybe like next weekend. Um, but you know, I also might set something for, I don't know. We'll see maybe this weekend. Oh, opinions on Oracle. Oh, Hey man, thanks for the content. Just got SDR offer for hundred K plus. That's awesome, man. Congrats. Super exciting. Top tier offer right there. Ever consider just retiring? Do you need a job to keep going? Yeah, I've I've considered retiring. Like you know, but the thing is, like, I like expensive stuff. As bad as that sounds, like I'm a big car guy. I like that. I like I like traveling. I like eating out a lot. 
So, you know, realistically, I have enough passive income where like it could cover like my mortgage and like reasonable expenses, but you know, I want to shoot a bit higher than that. My goal, my number for like really retiring is is pretty aggressive. It's it's 100 million and I have it set at that because I do want to start my own company um in a few years and then then grow that. So 75k OTE good start. Yeah, 75k is a good offer entry point for for SDR for sure. How would two different economies affect us in the US? Mainly it would just like split, you know, right now like most trade is settled in the US dollar and when you when you start settling stuff in other currencies that affects like the strength of the US dollar. So you know, big reason why the U.S. economy is so strong is a lot of like the business is concentrated here, and we have a lot of immigration. And once you start kind of like splitting things, uh, that's when, yeah, there's like a whole whole thing on it. But how do you find? Oh, thanks for the crown. How do you find SDR positions? LinkedIn is going to have a majority of the job positions. Like if it's a legit company, they're putting their postings on on LinkedIn. What have I heard about Gong? I've I've heard good things. There was a couple of people that have messaged me. I get like probably like 30, 40 DMs a day now. And Gong has come up like quite a few times. So, I mean, their product is good. And I've heard the sales culture is good too. I think software sales will be saturated in the future and drive down salaries. I don't think so. Mostly because it's, it's a similar type of thing as... Um, software engineering, right? People were saying like, oh, software engineering, that's gonna get saturated, drive down with outsourcing. But the thing is like, you can hire a bunch of reps, but not everyone's gonna be like a great rep. So it might be, it might get a little harder to get into the entry level roles, but it's still gonna be like a, you know, a narrowing pyramid, I guess at the top. Just you got my first SDR role, Australia 80K base. Oh, that's awesome. It's a really strong base for SDR. <sighs> thoughts on Arcteryx? I, I love Arcteryx. No, you mean Al Alteryx. I don't have too many strong thoughts on Al Alteryx. Um, I don't see too many red flags there. Does Amazon use Gong? No, we don't really use too many sales tools. The main thing is, um, you know, Outlook, like most companies, Salesforce, LinkedIn, Sales Navigator. Not much on the automation side. You have the op to go from SDR solutions on your cool. Yeah. sounds like if you have that op, it must be, a, you must be more technically minded. So solutions in here, you can get paid quite a bit in that role too. I'm coming to Chicago to get some beers with you. Yeah, man. Let me know. Is big data. Good thoughts on Grafana labs. Yeah, actually Grafana is Grafana. Super, I like what they're doing in the space. Big data. I mean, companies are just collecting more and more data as it goes. You said that you want to create your own company. You're in IT. What do I want to do? Uh, I like the cybersecurity space and cybersecurity risk analytics is what I'm uh, interested in. You'll scratch your lenses storing the glasses like that. Oh yeah, they're already like, these are already like scratched up. I got to get new glasses. Um, I don't know, these are like three years old and I forgot to get new pairs at the end of the year. So I missed, I missed out on that glasses benefit. And then I had like literally I got so pissed. I was like working on that, like that, that kit car in the garage. And I had, you know, one pair of glasses and I had another pair in my pocket and uh, I was wearing them. And then I needed to take them off because it was a little dark. And then I, I leaned over and I crushed them and I broke the frame and I was like, oh shit. And then I, I grabbed my other glasses from my backpack and then I did it the same. I literally broke two, two pairs of glasses, like right back to back. So I got, I got to go make an appointment to get new ones, get LASIK. I've thought about it, but the thing is, um, my vision isn't like terrible. Like I actually don't really wear glasses that often unless I'm driving or I need to see far away. Like it's like negative 0.7. So even if like, I could, I could still like read like farther away, just have to like squint. So I, I, I don't, I'm a little skeptical about some of the side effects with LASIK. I've heard like you can get like dry eyes, watery eyes. And your vision will still degrade, you know, when you hit like 40 or whatever. How many females do you see in tech sales? You know, there's, I think there's a lot more females in tech sales than in engineering. So I know like, like you can look at Google, they have their diversity 
and inclusion reports that they put out every year. When I was at Google, you know, I had, um, I mean, it was still mo mo mostly male, but it was like 80% male. So, you know, fairly high, especially compared to engineering. And then like my manager was female and my sales director, who my manager reported to was, was female too. So what's a better offer? One from AWS as a BDR, two from HPE as a pre-sales engineer. Well, it depends, what's the pay? So I know Amazon will pay BDRs quite a bit depending on your level. I would say um, AWS just because HPE is kind of one of those legacy companies a little bit at this point. Just got an SDR role, you're a female. Awesome, yeah. What school did I go to? I went to University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. I did that for my undergrad and then also for my um, MBA later. Are there good resources to crush the SDR role? Yeah, look at um, Trent Dressel. He's got some good stuff on YouTube. And there's one other one I gotta remember, I forgot his name. Uh, he's got some good stuff, but and then two books I like, Challenger Sale, look at that one. Uh, another good resource is the Mail Shake Cold Email Masterclass. I think that one's super relevant. It, to, it kinda has like these science-based prospecting tips that'll, that'll you know help out huge. Um, and then Game of Sales is cool, although maybe that's more for like at the enterprise sales level. Do I know Deanna Britt, Google Sales? Ah, uh, no, it doesn't sound familiar. She might have, she probably, um, she might have joined after I was there. Uh, do I cover Chicago Line or Central? I don't even, I don't have a specific territory. I have two like global level accounts. They, they both happen to have like a engineering presence in Chicago but my customers and their offices are all around. Like I'll be going to Berlin in, in like a month or two. Just did the Mailshake Masterclass help me clash the cold e email interview. Yeah, their stuff is solid because you know, they sell an email kind of like automation type tool, cadence tool, and they have a ton of data in terms of like what's worked well in other campaigns. So what made you go to tech and cinema med school? Uh, it was honestly burnout. Um, I had studied and I was always kind of like top of class. I actually graduated like salutatorian in high school. Um, and then just by like senior year after like, and I did like all those like gifted programs or whatever. And then uh, I was really just kind of like burned out at the end for more studying. And then I also was working as like a certified nursing assistant and I didn't really like the hospital environment. You know, it felt really cold. Everyone seemed like, you know, pretty depressed, depressed, like burnout's pretty high on the medical profession side. And I also was a little skeptical with where the industry was heading, just in terms of like regulations, I think they're gonna be clamping down quite a bit. Uh, so I don't, I don't really regret not going to med school, especially I'm pretty happy with the work-life balance, with the flexibility, with the career prospects. At first, when I was in my tech support role, uh, I maybe had like maybe some doubts. I was kind of wondering, you know, if this, if this was right. You know, I was only making like 62k, um, but it all kind of fell into place. So actually, I'm, I'm super glad. If I didn't go into the tech industry. Maybe if I didn't go to software and stayed at that first company, maybe I would have regretted it, but pretty happy right now. I would be basically just now graduating residency and starting to work as a doctor. If I did medical school, I was just thinking about this, but I'd be, you know, I'd have like $300,000 in debt with no real estate, no investments or anything. So, you know, pretty happy with everything holistically. Where do I see the best tech sales niches for the next few years? Uh, cybersecurity and cloud, I think those two, and then fintechs, those you're gonna see a lot there. Uh, supply chain is great too. Hey Tom, just dropping in, sweet view. Thanks Vlad, yeah, this is uh, sh uh, Chicago. Nice, it looks nice when it's lit up at night. You, you switched to sales from support, yeah. Did, SE here, best career move ever. Yeah, sales, sales engineering, uh, tech sales, it's a, uh, underrated field like people talk a lot about like investment banking or whatever actually investment banking is interesting i didn't know how much investment bankers even made at first too that's like another industry where there's so much gatekeeping but you work like crazy hours so uh you'd rather have a bad day in it sales than a bad day as a doctor with a patient yeah absolutely for sure like you can just like you don't really have to worry about people dying on you like i can't imagine dealing with that uh, 
tech sales is the best kept secret that we don't try to keep a secret. You know, you say that, but I get comments saying like, hey, like, why are you like letting people know? Like, you're just creating competition. I mean, for me, like, I'm at like a senior level. Anyone who's just entering the industry right now, like my role is advertises like 10 plus years of experience. No one is going to be coming for that. So, and there's like so many companies like that are still going to be formed. There's a lot of openings. And then also because these positions pay so well, most people don't really stay working past like 50. And if they do, it's just because it's, you know, for fun for them. Uh, most people are like quitting their careers well before that. So lots of positions, lots of positions that need to be backfilled. Very different than like law, for example, or investment banking, where people do work pretty late into their careers. Can you talk about the path after you decide Nomad? Yeah, I talked about that twice. I'm going to be posting this recorded recording afterwards on YouTube. Um, so I'm just going to skip to the other questions. But if you do want to hear that answer, I did like, a, I think I did like two TikToks on that one. Next move for me, I'm going to stay at AWS, see where, see where it goes. We have pay raises coming up, see, performance reviews, um, see how that turns out. And then I tend to take more of like a passive approach for evaluating the next career move. Like you never know like what promotion opportunities come up internally. And then also I like to keep like an open mind and if recruiters reach out to me, I like to hear about new startups. I like to see like how much they're paying to see if I'm not being underpaid. Um, so I'm definitely not actively looking for the next position, but I am thinking about what the next career move is. So definitely could stay, stay at Amazon for a while. They raise their base caps and everything. So AWS losing, but yeah, the, and the next real move would be for me would be starting my own, um, cybersecurity startup. I think being a founder is like the highest level of sales that you can be in my opinion. AWS is losing market share. Maybe, but I mean, have you seen their, their growth is still incredible. I mean, it, I mean, it makes sense that they would lose some market share, but like the overall market is increasing. So it's not like it's like a fixed pie of cloud spend. It's also growing as well. How stable is the SDR role? It's pretty stable, SDR. SDR is kind of more about activity. So as long as you can put in like the daily work, like you'll be fine. How do you describe the AWS workload on the sales side? You feel like SAs, SEs have a huge plate. Yeah, uh, you know, sometimes it could be a lot. There's there's a lot of like reporting and 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 document writing that you have to do on the sales side. And that's just like, what that's what happens in a lot of big companies. So typical hours is like 40 hours, sometimes maybe 50 hours if it's like account planning. And then travel is probably, you know, once or twice a month right now for a few days. Hardest part of being an AE, I think the hardest part of being an AE is just like balancing all the different responsibilities and just, you have to be very proactive within the role. Um, it's not a role where like, they'll always tell you, this is what you need to do. Like they'll, they'll tell you that when you're an SDR, but when you're at the AE level, you have to think long-term for the account and you also have to think short-term too. So you have to like balance activities in both buckets. And if you only focus on like short-term example, for example, it's going to set you up for failure in the long term. And likewise, if you're only focusing on long term, you might not hit your quota in like the upcoming quarter. Uh, would you go back to Google and in interview process? Maybe. It depends on the level. If it was a high level role with a good territory manager, I would, you know, I'd maybe consider it. It, it. I mean, the, the draw there is that cloud is the same for the most part so it'd be it'd be there wouldn't be a lot of like transition there oh actually i gotta finish that reminds me i do have to like finish this training and i have to send out a weekly update report on some opportunities that i'm working on so i uh, really enjoyed chatting uh, I might hop on later tonight. I normally do these every Wednesday. I didn't do it this Wednesday evening because I was in Seattle taking customers out to dinner. I um, I did a bunch of um, Instagram stories. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll put them in the highlights. I guess that's what it's called. I don't do Instagram as much. So you can go ahead and see like what travel looks like within the role. Uh, I'll be posting this recording on YouTube. So go ahead and if you want to rewatch it, you can go ahead and do that. All the other weeks are there as well. If you have any other questions, feel free to message me on Instagram. That's the best way to get in contact with me. 
Um, I do respond to messages on LinkedIn, but I only I only really look at that like every couple of weeks. I think I have a bunch of messages I actually have to go through on there now that I remember, but thanks everyone. Oh yeah, pay progression. I have like a couple TikToks. I'm gonna do another one and kind of summarizing that. People seem to like the pay progression one, but thanks everyone. I'll talk to you later.